The man was intimate with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I haven't had a male child with, with the Lord's help. She also gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel became a shepherd of flocks, but Cain worked the ground. In the course of time, Cain presented some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also presented an offering. Some of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering but did not have regard for Cain and his offering. Cain was furious, and he looked despondent. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you furious, and why do you look despondent? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. I want to preach briefly for a little while using as a subject, I just can't get right. I just can't get right. In order for us to rule over sin, <laughs> we must do what is right. Simple. But what is right? What is the right thing? What is the right way? What is, what, is, what is truth? What is it? Because if we define what's right based on our perspective, we're subject to get it wrong. Because there was a time in my life when my perspective of right was really twisted and perverted, but yet I still thought I was right. Come on, let's be real. Everybody might not be, you know, I tell everybody I got a little different come background. I came up a little different. You know, so for me, my perspective of right, truth was real twisted. Right? And, and it was so twisted to the reason why, let me put it that way, it was so twisted because I felt it was right. Give you an example. Please don't laugh at me. But if you do, you're free to. I thought God gifted me to cook crack cocaine and sell it. Mm -hmm. That was my confession. Because I was good at it. Right? And I, I didn't have anybody to guide me right there. And I felt if I was good at it, it must be from God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I took care of my kids. So I justified selling drugs because I was doing something right with it. Because isn't it right to take care of your family? Isn't it good for a dad to work? That's what we're supposed to do, right? As men provide for our family. So I took that truth and I justified what I was doing with that truth and said I was right. And we all go through that as human beings in, at some point in our life because what I understand now that I didn't understand then is I don't care where you from, where, where, how you was raised, how you come up, how much money you got. Humanity does not have the ability to do the right thing. If the church could get that, if, if we can understand I don't have the ability to get it right, I can't. Because when I think, when I think something is right apart from Christ, or I'm speaking apart from Christ, I'm easily to be deceived. And that's what's going on now. We live in what's called a postmodern age. What that is, is that we live in an age where everyone's perspective is their truth. Right? That's why you hear people saying, my truth. And my truth tells me what's right. Because it feels good. It feels like the right thing. But I didn't know what was right. 
History has proven that the nature of man is not capable of doing what's right. We, <laughs> because we don't know what right is. How can you do what's right and you don't know what's right? The Pharisees failed at this. They took what was right, a.k.a. the law, and perverted it. Humanity don't have the ability to do the right thing. Paul quoted in Romans chapter 8 that there is no one that is righteous, not one. No one. And if I would have understood that at an earlier age, I wouldn't have made a lot of mistakes I made because I thought I was right. <laughs> See, I, I thought that what I was doing was a good thing. It wasn't until I came into the understanding of truth, which is Christ, that I realized what I was doing was not so right after all. This is why we can't trust in our works. Right? We can't trust in what we do. Because what we do may not lead us the direction that God has ordained. Look at what God told Cain. If you do what is right. <laughs> now, to understand what is right, we must examine Hebrews 11 and 4. We must examine that. To understand what's right, what God is saying here, we must go to the text. Remember what I, what, what I, what I, what I teach. There's one total narrative of the scripture. And all throughout the scripture, it's shadows pointing to this narrative, which is redemption in Jesus Christ. And in order for us to understand any aspect of the text, we must take a total view of the text in order for the text to speak. Because, example, if we just read Genesis 4 in itself, you will begin to build context that may be out of the revelation that the Bible is showing us. Because Hebrews chapter 4 reveals what's right. Genesis 4 by itself doesn't reveal what's right. So you will have an incomplete understanding. Amen? Just trying to give you a little teaching foundation here. So watch this. Hebrews chapter 4, let's go there. It shows us what's right. Chapter 4, 11. 11, I'm sorry. Genesis 4. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 4. Look at what it says. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. Look what it says. By faith, he was approved as a righteous man because God approved his gifts. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through faith. Now, it was obvious that Cain was upset because he had worked hard. Look at what the text says in Genesis 4 and 3. In the course of time. So we know Cain put in work. Because Cain was a what? Till the ground. So in the course of time, Cain put in work. So when God didn't approve his gift, he got upset. Why? Because you can imagine, imagine you doing something and that's how we, that's how we do. And you didn't spend your time and you didn't put your effort in this. And your brother present his gift and you present yours. And God don't accept that. But what Cain didn't understand is that the value of a gift is not in the substance of the gift. Say that again. The value of the gift 
that he was giving God was not in the substance of the gift itself. In other words, the gift can be flawless. But the gift itself is not what God is looking for. So it's not the aspect of a person's work that's pleasing to God. It's the force that causes the work that's pleasing to God. It speaks to the heart. Think about it. And I know a lot of us in here can contest to this, but haven't you been mad when stuff didn't go the way you thought it should go? When you had it played out in your mind how this is supposed to end up? The conclusion of the situation and God didn't let it happen? That's disappointing. And this is what happened to Cain. He didn't please God. Now, if you go down in Hebrews chapter 11, and we're not going to go into it for the sake of time, but the scripture tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, we have to understand the faith that we're talking about right here. Because look what it says. Verse 6, now without faith is impossible to please God. Now watch this. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists. Because a lot of people apply faith to stuff and substance. Right? But this is not what the text is talking about. The text is talking about that you must believe that God exists. That he's real. And this ain't, this ain't that superficial stuff that we do. And that we present, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, I trust God. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, no, this ain't, this ain't what we're talking about. Right? If you believe that God is, you believe everything that God has done. Amen. If you trust in God, you trust in God's plan Amen. and his provision. See, people got to stop deceiving themselves because watch this. The easiest person for you to lie to is yourself. And people are deceiving themselves saying that I'm in faith. And be so far away from faith <laughs> till it's sad. Right? Because we're putting our faith and our trust in works. Same thing Cain did. Same thing Cain did. Because Hebrews chapter 4 revealed this. But Abel, he was moving different. Right. Now look what the text said. Many preachers missed this. Since the one, uh, Hebrews eleven six part B. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he is, exists and that he rewards those who seek him. <laughs> this ain't talking about. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I'm going to believe God for my house so God can be pleased and he can give me my house. That's not what the text is saying. That's not what the text is saying. Mm -mm. Let's get in this a little bit more. Let's get in. See, Hebrews 11 and 6 speaks, it's so powerful. Without faith, you can't please God. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he's real and that he exists. You, you, can't, you, 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 can't, you can't draw near to God and expect something from God if you don't believe in God. And to believe in God is to believe in his plan. You, you can't say I believe in God and I trust God, but you don't trust what he's saying. If you give God the title as father in your heart, you have to trust him as a father. Right? This is what the text is telling us. You, you can't come to God and not believe in him. It's not possible. And when you believe in him, you believe in everything that he says. In everything he ordains. 
which speaks to Christ. Watch this. Look at what Eve told Ab, I mean, he told Adam in verse in Genesis. <laughs> he told Ab. <laughs> that funny. Right? <laughs> that fun. That fun. Man. Hey, <laughs> listen, hey. <laughs> but now, Eve e told Adam in Genesis 4 and 1, the man was intimate with his wife. This is what he said. And she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I have not have had, I have had a male child with the Lord's help. Now, I need y'all to understand what's going on right here. Because this scene is right after God spoke that your seed is going to crush the head of Satan. Mm -hmm. Now, here comes the birth of Cain, the firstborn. It's very significant now. Cain is the firstborn. And Eve declared that I have had this child with the Lord's help. Right? right? So look, look who the enemy attacks. Through sin, that's why God said sin is cre cre crouching at your door. If you do what's right, if you have trust in me, Hebrews 11 and 4 say that. So that's what God tell him. Trust me like your brother did. Right. Not, don't trust in what you've done. Trust in me and glorify me in what you've done. That's right. It's different perspective. So we have Cain here. And Cain is the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And Eve acknowledges that Cain came because of God's help. See that? So, what Satan was attacking was the word. Mm -hmm. Very important. He was, he, was he was attacking the Edemic seed. See that? See, see, when we look at the text, we, we, got to, we got to understand, okay, the people, the characters in the text is important, but the issue behind what's going on in the text is just as important. Because what we're going to learn through the line of Cain, a lot of evil stuff began to happen in the world. That's later. But right now, Cain is going through it. And God is trying to tell him, hey, man, you can go back and get this. You can do this again. Just do it the right way. Trust me. Right? Because God is what? Our environment. <laughs> see that? And we're going to see this in the line of Cain. Watch this. The difference between Cain and Abel was Abel was right. Cain was wrong. What made Abel right? Faith. What made Cain wrong? Words. Apart from faith. It all lines up with what James said. Show me a person that says they have faith without works. Show me a person that has faith with works. What you got? Dead works. Works that comes from God through the Holy Spirit. Right? This is this, this what God was, was showing us in the text when it came to Cain. Right? In the book of the wisdom of God, which is Proverbs, you know, I love, I call it the book of the wisdom of God, what the Bible says. It says, for the way that seems right to a person, in the end, that way leads to death. See? Let's, let's get deep into that right quick before we close. The way that seems right. This word way is the pathway. It's the way. The way, the path that seems right. And we all fall victim to this in our life in some form of fashion. This is the, this is the essence. This is where deception comes from. The way that seems right to us. Remember in the garden. Eve looked at the tree, and when she looked at the tree after the word from Satan had been given to her, she had a different perspective about it. It looked good for food. Nourishment. 
good for obtaining wisdom. How does what God say is bad and wrong turn into something that look and feel so good? We see that in culture today. Everything feel good in culture. For a moment. Right? This is why I tell people not to trust in yourself. Don't trust in you. Trust in God. And if you trust in God, you got to trust in Christ. Because this is his plan. That's just like my children say I'm their father, but they don't trust me. See that? They don't trust me. They don't have no faith in me. How, how can you say I'm your father? <laughs> You're supposed to let me lead you. The way that seems right. Look what it says. Seems right. Write this down. You cannot define what's right based on what feels. I'm trying to help y'all make better and wise decisions. You cannot define what's right based on how you feel. Because usually, God's way don't feel good to the flesh. The scriptures say the flesh lusts against the spirit. That means it, 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 it pushes the spirit away. Then why you get sleepy when you open up your Bible app, but you be wide awake when you got TikTok on. Let me be honest, man. I'm trying to get down on your level. You, 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 you can ride all night, 1, 2 o'clock on TikTok. But as soon as you open up that Bible app, that's good night, Quill. <sighs> and wake up in the morning, don't remember nothing you read. Because the flesh don't want nothing to do with the spirit. So why would you trust it? Why would you trust yourself? <laughs> When you lust against what's right. The fall in you. Yeah. You know what the scriptures say? The way that seems right. Man, you know how many situations I've got myself in because I felt it was right? Hmm. 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 Can anybody contest in here? Can, in, can anybody about witness today? Am I the only one in here that made foolish mistakes? And if you look at the source of the foolish mistake, it's because you listen to yourself. <laughs> you convince yourself. And don't be, see, see, just because we know the scriptures don't mean that this don't, it's worse for us because we know how to use the scriptures to make it sound right. Amen. Oh, that's why leaders fall so much. Let's just be real. Because let me show you something. It's a dangerous thing for God to be revealing to you and, and you feel that you got something to do with it. I've been there. Oh, it's the knowing on my life. It ain't nothing but the Holy Ghost. It's just the Spirit of God. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It goes back to the statement I made in the beginning. When you can stand before God and man and yourself and say, man, I ain't got it. I'm busted. I'm broken. And I expect me to do the wrong thing when I'm not in Christ. So I need to stay there. Some of us just need to stay in Christ. <laughs> Come on, man. How I stay in Christ, Pastor? Stay doing what he said. You ain't got to know Greek and Hebrew. You say that for us. See, God gave us that gift so we can see what's true and what. No. Do what Jesus said. Amen. Give you an example. Love your enemies. Whoo, Pastor, why you had to go there? Because <laughs> that's something all let's fight with. Love your enemies. Pray for those that misuse you. You see how, see, I'm, I'm trying to show you something. I don't know about you, but that, that does something like, that's foolish. To, wait, they, they trying to hurt me. Why I got to pray for them? He didn't say be foolish. He didn't say you got to connect, but you got to pray. See, it's harder to pray for somebody that mistreats you than to be phony around. You come in by and say, what's up, bro? And the whole time you don't like them, but to pray for them, it takes sacrifice. Come on, we talking up in here now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Pray for your enemies. 
Come on, let me win. That's hard. As a matter of fact, it's impossible to do it with the right heart if you ain't in the Holy Spirit. Then you notice that Jesus lift the bar so high that you got to let him do it in you. That's why Paul said it's not I that live, but it's Christ that liveth in me. So any goodness that you see coming from me is because I sat down and he stood up. Oh, pastor, you so no, 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 no. He anointed. I'm sitting down. And anytime I stand up, it's trouble. They don't look at me like that because when you stand up, it's trouble too. You too. Because the Bible say no one is right. <laughs> Everybody has sinned. Why you keep saying that, Pastor? Because I'm trying to get you to see you ain't got it. You got to depend on the one who got it. That's right. Amen. Amen. The way that seems right to a man. In the end of it, it's the way to death. Whew, this is good here. Yeah. Because we're using that word death is eternal separation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Solomon, in his wisdom that God was giving him to give to us, say, but there also is another way. And it seems right. But it ain't right. See, I, I watch these, I, I, I'm, I'm a contractor, so I, I, I watch reels, and when I watch reels, a lot of contractor stuff come up on the reels. See, you got to understand the algorithm, they'll tell on you, right? Whatever you watch, it's going to show you. So you, 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 you want to you wanna stop getting tempted, stop looking at them girls, start looking at some stuff productive, and that's what will come on your reels. See? So I'm on my reels. And I get construction on Maria, and it's this, this inspector, this home inspector, and he got this little slogan. When he go on looking at a house, he sees some of the contractor did is messed up, he'll look in the camera, he said, nah, that ain't right. That ain't right. See, that right, that, that seems right to man, that ain't right. Mm -hmm. That ain't right. No, no, no. You got to die to that right. Because it's leading to death. Start because here we got in society. I'm, I'm gonna show you the core of that. The only way is Jesus. That's it. That's it. He's the only way. Let's establish that. There is no other way. Back to Eden. Eden. Back to the garden. Back to right standing with God. Let me show you why. Let's break this down. Let me, let, me, let me show you why. Because God is perfect and just. Right? Once Adam sinned, every individual that came from Adam is victim of what he did. So you, 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 you can come out the womb talking about, I'm perfect. Wah. The scripture tells us that you're not. Why? Because you're born into sin. And watch this. As you grew, as you grew, guess what's shaping you? Sin. That you was born into. See? How you, you don't have to teach a child how to lie? Natural. It comes natural. And most of it comes out of what? Fear. It's powerful, man. He's the only way. Every other way seems right. It seems right. It seems like you're going in the right direction. It seems like I'm in the right place. I don't need Jesus. My, my life is all right. Shoot, for real, for real, better than a lot of Christians I see. But you're you going to devote your eternity on man? 
Because that's what we do. We try to say, well, I don't want to deal with the church stuff because of what some man did. If, if we would rest in what Christ did, you wouldn't have that confession. As a matter of fact, man's flaw points to him. And if you will see Christ, that's why I say to the poor, all things are poor. It's not saying I'm, I'm, I'm overlooking the poor, but, but man, that man needs Jesus. See, when you start looking at life like that, people will stop affecting you so much. Jesus said something that I want the church to adopt. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Why? Because it's ignorance. It's sin. And for some of us, we were way worse than they were. But sometimes when God clean you up, you'll get a little high mighty there. You'll get a little puffed up there. And it's okay because God chastens too. He'll break you back down. Right? Not, not because he tripping, but because you tripping. And the moment we get it, that we're not better off than nobody else. We ain't got it together. We ain't got it going on. Okay, what kind of house you stay in? What kind of car you drive? How much money in your bank account? Who your mama, your daddy, your auntie is? You're busted and disgusted. You're like the homeless folk that walk up and down this street. And if we will understand that, we would be willing to help them more. But because we're stuck in our ways, we're selfish, we don't love Christ for real, we're on our way to hell. But Jesus Christ looked at us and seen all that. And he said, you know what, Father? I'm going to go down and help them. And I'm going to make them become from slaves to become my brothers and sisters. And they're going to be adopted into what their works can't welcome them in. Right? So you've never seen a baby get out the, get out the cradle and say, I want them for my mom and dad. No. The mom and daddy come choose the baby. And once they choose the baby and sign the paperwork, that baby have all rights to their family just like the other children did. So guess what God did to you? He chose you, watch this, before he created you. He adopted you before he made you. That's powerful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to seal them in my adoption. Then I'm going to create them because no matter what the enemy does in their life, they are sealed by what I said. So no matter how you feel, if you're saved, you're saved. And you were saved before you got here. See, God made it so your salvation can't be interrupted by time. Right. Nor nothing of this world. Right. You wonder why you feel the way you feel sometimes. Right. right? You wonder why it's just something about God that I can't put my finger on. But where I've been going and what I've been looking at and what I've been hearing just ain't the truth. Right. Even though you don't fully understand it. You know why? Because you're saved. My sheep know my voice and the stranger they will not follow. So when people are not preaching the gospel, you may not understand Genesis to Revelation, but you know I don't fit in right there. Who am I talking to in here? You looking for a home and you don't fit in with religion. Amen. This building ain't a home. It's just a gathering place. Your home is in heaven and you got a Messiah up there building you a mansion. Rest in there. Amen. Somebody say I've been predestined. Say that like you mean it. Say, I've been predestined. You, you know what that means? We finna go home, but I finna tell you what that means. He foreknew you before he made you. He ordained you before he made you. He sanctified you. That means set you apart before he made you. So you are conflicted because you feel the way you feel after he made you. But God is only taking what you're going through only to perfect you so he can present you and testify what he said about you before he made you. When you get that, you'll get glory. That's right. You keep thinking I have to pray for it. Look, dude, dude, I got to pray for it. I got to jump up and down for it. I got to praise for it. I got to tie for it. But God said, I've already given it to you. Come on, Behold, I've given you all things pertaining to what? Life and godliness. You already got it. Say, I already got it. Right. Come on, can I talk to your spirit? Say, I already got it. Right. Say it like you mean it. Say, I already got it. Right. Everything I need, I already got it. I might not have what I want, but I got what I need. Because the scriptures say he will supply all of your needs, what? According to his riches, his glory in Christ Jesus. Stop asking for what you want and rest in what he's already provided. And that's your needs. That's your need. I may not got the beans, but I got what I need. I may not got the clothes to put on, but I got what I need. I may get a little hungry sometime, 
but I got what I need. My money may be a little funny, but I got what I need, eh? Who am I talking to when they play? I might can't celebrate because I don't have everything I want, but I thank God I got everything I need. I might not got the car, but I got some good shoes on. That means my foot won't be hurt when I'm walking. See, you got to learn. See, the Bible saying all things that we should get what? Things. Hard man, you better thank God for what you got. You better be content in what you got. You may not have everything you want, but you alive, baby. So thank God for having breath in your lawn, a right frame of mind. I may not be perfect, but I got grace. Hallelujah. 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 Can you be settled with what God did and stop asking him for what he ain't gave you yet? Because Jesus said, your father know what you need before you ask. So if he hasn't given it to you, you don't need it. Oh, Jesus, who am I talking to in this place? What you think you need is really a distraction. Hallelujah. You know why God ain't releasing? it? Because it's a distraction. It'll get you off track. Hallelujah. God trying to teach you to be peaceful in the midst of the storm. He's not going to let the storm leave because if the storm leaves, he can't teach you to be peaceful in the storm. Because how you going to help people in the storm and you tripping when you're in the storm? Mm. You can't help people in their storm until you learn to perfect yourself in your storm. What? Not perfect. Perfect. That means mature. What mature means? I can fall down and keep going. Challenges can come and hit me, but I shake it off and I keep going. Hallelujah. I may not make a hundred, but I made 89. Come on now. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. I may not have did everything perfect, but see, sometimes you need a little pepper with the salt. Y'all miss that. Y'all miss that. You need a little pepper. If you got all salt, be salty. Too much salt. Get your blood pressure. Make it run up. You need balance in your life. Amen. Amen. God don't need you to go through. You need you to go through. You got to go through to get to. I always remember that. I always remember saying this and I'm, I'm sitting down. Ain't nothing like going through with God. That's what you got to understand. You ain't going through by yourself. It's so much stuff God teaches in the storm. So much he reveals in the storm. So much he's building in the storm. Hallelujah. Ain't no such thing as no one hit wonder. Right? You, you, you might not see this thing come to pass until it's time for it to come to pass. The end. That's what the scripture's talking about. He ain't talking about our redeeming right here. We get glimpses of that. We get, right, but, but no, it's something greater than here. Right. Come on now. We talking about eternity. That's what we got to get our mind on. That's when we gonna get content. Mm -hmm. If I get it now, cool. If I don't, cool. Whatever that may be. We don't come here for that. We come here for Christ. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. None of that stuff matters, man. None of it matters compared to the knowledge of knowing Christ. Now, if you take Christ away from you, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. But, but compared to Christ, nothing physical matters. Amen? Amen? Come on, receive that this morning for yourself. Say, I'm content. I'm content. In whatsoever state I'm in. I see the problem. But God bigger than that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Come on, man. Say God bigger than that. Come on, say it like you mean God bigger than that. Whatever that is, God bigger than that. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. He bigger than that. Yeah. Don't be like Cain. Do what's right. What's right, Pastor? Christ. Christ. Faith in Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen? God bless you, man. Let's give God a hand clap of prayer. Amen. We can't be like Cain.